Hi hey guys, Buildzoid here, and today we're going to be taking a look at my first DDR5-8300 memory overclock. Um, now, for the system specs, I'm using the Ryzen 7 9700X. Uh, the motherboard is a Gigabyte B850M Force. I bought the motherboard, so a big thank you to the channel supporters for funding the purchase of the board. And the memory kit that I'm using is a 2x16 gig G-Skill 8000CL38 Expo kit, which was provided by G-Skill. Um, so big thank you to G-Skill for the memory kit, and that's based on Hynix 16 gigabit ADI memory chips in a single rank configuration. As you can see, I do have a fan uh, pointed directly at the memory sticks. That's just held in place with some very tall motherboard standoffs. Um, and yeah, the CPU has a 240mm AIO on it. Um, now then, let's take a look at the stress tests. So, um, as you can see, we are still running Prime95 large FFTs, and that's been running for how, what, like, okay, well, that's 12 yesterday. Actually, it's technically not yesterday that the date on the system is messed up as usual. Like, the thing is, I don't hook the test benches to the internet, so once the date gets screwed up for some reason, it just stays screwed up. So, you know, oh well. Um, but anyway, so this should be now running for... What, like 12, 19 hours? So, yeah, like, almost a day of Prime 95 large FFTs. Uh, 13 hours of Carhu, uh, and then of course, uh, six over six hours of Y Crunch or VT3. So, by my stability testing standards, I'd say this is rather stable. Um, also, this has been very, um, like relatively consistent because obviously, like 8300 from like a Ryzen 9000 performance perspective is a little bit questionable because. At DDR5-8000, you can synchronize the Infinity Fabric to the memory controller. At DDR5-8100, 8200, and 8300, you can't, because for all of those, you'll have memory ratio, like the memory controller will be running at like uh, 2050 megahertz, or in this case, 2075 megahertz, and there simply isn't an FCLK ratio that actually synchronizes with that. Now, if you're running a workload that is primarily memory bandwidth bound, that doesn't really matter, okay? DDR5-8300 with uh, at more higher, like high FCLK is gonna give you more memory bandwidth than DDR5-8000. But from a latency, latency perspective, this is not necessarily uh, ideal, which is why I usually wouldn't like, like this isn't really a setup that I've really pushed for in the past very much. Um, and even now, like I like, I'd say, like, the, there's sort of two issues, and, the, like, this is also the first motherboard where this has actually worked for me somewhat, re like, reasonably, whereas on a lot of the other motherboards, when I tried to push for the speeds this high, um, it was really, really, really not stable. Um, now, that might have changed with some BIOS updates, so, you know, now that I have this working, obviously, I'm going to go through my motherboard collection and, and retest um, some of them, not necessarily all of them. But, um, yeah, so, um, like, the main reason I've decided to go for this is to sort of test the capabilities of this board. Ideally, I'd want to be running 8400, because at 8400, you can actually synchronize the uh, Infinity Fabric and the memory controller, because the memory controller runs at 2100, and there is a 2100 Infinity Fabric ratio. But, unfortunately, 8400 is very unstable, um, and I haven't really figured out a fix for that yet um so yeah i'm like i'm thinking the next thing i want to try is like 24 gig memory like you know hynix 24 gigabit m die instead of 16 gig a die because that might be a little bit easier on the memory controller though i kind of not entirely sure that in this scenario it is actually the well we'll see but i'm not like a hundred percent certain that that's actually gonna make a difference because um, the main thing that I sort of discovered when pushing for these higher speeds with this CPU on this motherboard is that it basically just needs a lot of VDDP. That, that's just kind of like when I briefly had 8400 working, like I say working, it wasn't working. It ran 30 minutes of Carhu or something. But either way, that was the longest Carhu run I've ever gotten at 8400. Um, and that required setting the VDDP to like 1.19 volts. The one issue with doing that is that it sometimes doesn't post. Um, as in, I haven't been able to get it to post since. Like, I got that one 30-minute run of Carhu at 1.19, and 
And then I was like, okay, maybe if I could just give it a bit more VDDP, it'll like clear up the stability. Uh, yeah, when I set it to like 1.21, it just didn't post anymore. So um, it seems that at like very high VDDPs, the CPU starts having like issues with actually initializing. And that's, um, yeah, that, that kind of puts a damper on things. Um, and I tried like, yeah, well, I haven't like tested that exhaustively yet, but yeah, that does, doesn't seem to be confidence inspiring. So based on that behavior, I'm not entirely certain that like changing to a memory chip that has better signal quality is necessarily gonna do anything because I'm not entirely certain that VDDP, or at least within my understanding, VDDP shouldn't really affect signal integrity that much because this is a internal voltage to the memory controller. Um, for signaling, that's VDDIO. That's that's why it has I/O in it, um, but um, yeah. Anyway, um, so you know, from a performance perspective, it would be better if I could have gotten DDR five eighty four hundred to work. But like, I mainly wanted to see if the motherboard is capable of like pushing past eight thousand. Because even with this uh, Ryzen seven ninety seven hundred X, on like all of the other motherboards I've tried, I've had like no success getting eighty three hundred even remotely stable. Whereas here, like, it's been running stress tests for almost 40 hours, right? And I say almost 40 hours because there was a pretty big gap between, uh, like, me starting Y-Cruncher and me running Carhu. Because, um, yeah, I ran Y-Cruncher while I was asleep, and I sleep longer than six hours. So, you know, there's, like, a maybe, like, a two- or three-hour gap between the uh, Y-Cruncher run and then the Carhu run. But anyway... Um, yeah, like the board is evidently very capable as as far as memory frequency goes, or at least more capable than every other board I've tried so far, or maybe the BIOSes have gotten better, so, you know, need to go back and retest. Um, well, yeah, like need to go back and do some retesting. But um, yeah, so this was sort of a... So this is like... I Like if you have something that is, you know, a bandwidth limited workload, and maybe with... Um, well, actually, speaking of bandwidth limited, uh, also, I'm not running the FCLK maxed out, right? As you can see, it's just 2133 um, instead of 2200. And from a performance perspective in this scenario where the like memory controller and Infinity Fabric can't uh, synchronize, it is best to just run the Infinity Fabric as fast as possible. But uh, I really didn't want to have to fight any more stability issues, right? Um, cause like I've not had any success with getting 8,300 or even 8,200 to work in the past. So I didn't want to end up having to like, you know, I didn't want to have two different battles at the same time. Um, so yeah, so kept the FCLK, whoops, grabbed the wrong thing. Um, so kept the FCLK kind of, kind of low just for this. Um, but yeah, from like, if you were actually serious around, about running an 8300 setup, you really should be pushing the FCLK just as high as it goes. And on this CPU, that would probably be 2200. But of course, verifying FCLK stability has always been a massive pain. Um, anyway, uh, I did forget to sort of show, yeah, we have no errors down here for, uh, you know, Windows hardware errors. Um, also, it looks like the 24-pin power connector is loose again. <laughs> this is like a really common issue for me with the, the test bench boards is that like the 24-pin doesn't isn't plugged in all the way and then the 5 volts gets a bit low, but oh well. I'll just have to jiggle the cable, I guess. Um, anyway, CPU maxed out at 85 degrees. Um, oh wait, no, 90 degrees, but you know, that's fine. Um, and I do have the CPU PBO'd so that it doesn't have the usually like eight, it doesn't have the like 88 watt power limit that it usually does. Um, as that just helps put a little bit more load onto the, uh, memory controller. Anyway, um, yeah, so that's all the stress tests and everything I wanted to show in Windows, I think. So we're gonna stop Prime95. I'm just gonna take a screenshot in case I forget forgot something um, and now let's go into the BIOS
Unfortunately, Gigabyte decided to leave the postcode off this motherboard. Like, there, you can see through the fan, you can see that there's, like, the footprint for a postcode, but it would it would be too, like, competitive in Gigabyte's motherboard lineup, so they didn't put the postcode on there. Anyway, so here we are in the BIOS. Um, and, yeah, um, for the most part, like, I didn't have to do much. Um, oh, yeah, so... I'm not sure if I mentioned this earlier, but basically what I noticed was that to run higher speeds than 8,000, I just needed to raise like VDDQ and VDDP. Like VDDP is the is the big one. Like it's, it's like the memory controller just seems to scale with VDDP until you set the VDDP so high that it doesn't post anymore. Um, so yeah, that's how I ended up at 1.15. Also, I don't think there's any reason that 1.15 VDDP should be like unsafe for the CPU. Um, so yeah, I've like personally, I don't have a problem with running that. Um, anyway, uh, for VDDQ, uh, this I'm less certain that you need to set it this high. Um, but um, yeah, I haven't done like I haven't tested extensively if like lower VDDQ is viable. It might be, but you know, I didn't want to like I did kind of want to get something done soon, so. Yeah, like that may be something I'm gonna revisit in like future testing or well yeah though right now my priority in terms of futures testing is ideally getting 8400 to work um, or getting 8300 to work on other motherboards um, anyway let's go into the memory settings so I did tighten the cast latency a little bit this is well okay no CL34 at 8300 is not going to work at 1.55 volts that would probably need around 1.65 to 1.7 with this memory kit um anyway TRCD48 this might be a little bit looser than it needs to be also this is a gigabyte board which is annoying because we don't have TRCDWR accessible in the main timings menu if we wanted to mess with TRCDWR we need to go and I'm not going to do that right now because I don't remember it's been months since I've last been in that menu um anyway TRP40 that might be pretty close to minimized because at 8000 you can't usually go below like 38 um, so yeah, this is, this is probably a pretty close to as low as it's going to go. Um, TRAS 126, cause it doesn't do anything based on my past testing. TRC 84, I just linearly scaled it up from in the TRC I run at 8,000, which is 80. So if 80 at 8,000, then 8,400 at 8,300, which, okay, there's, you know, like I was trying to get 8400 to work and also 83 and 84 are functionally the same thing um, in this scenario. Like obviously if we were borderline on instability, like lowering a timing by one tick is not necessarily the same thing because one tick lower could be unstable, right? But like leaving it one tick higher is not really going to change performance or anything. Uh, TWR is just as low as it goes, which is 48. Uh, refresh interval completely maxed out. Funny thing about refresh interval, it gets shorter as your memory frequency increases. So 65,000 refresh interval is actually a shorter refresh interval. At, well, 65,000 refresh interval at 8,300 is shorter than 65,000 at 6,000. Just fun fact. Um, anyway, TRFC 512. This might go a little bit lower than this, but eh. You know, it's not going to make massive performance differences at this point. TRP-16, um, that's just like a TRP value that works a lot of the time, in my experience. Uh, TRRDL-12, this is not minimized. Um, going past 8,000, I wasn't sure if like TRRDL might actually need to get looser, and so I just gave it plus 4 and called it a day. It's worth noting that TRRDL isn't really like that. Like, unless your TRRDL is like super duper loose, it's not that important from, for performance, so... You know, 12.8 is not really going to be that different in terms of performance from 8.8. So, um, yeah, and again, my priority with this setup was really sort of to try to test the capabilities of the board rather than the memory sticks, right? And memory timings are internal to the memory sticks. So, um, yeah, anyway, WTRL24, this is probably really loose, because at 8,000, you can run it at 16, and I just gave it plus 8, because that seemed convenient. It could probably work at, like, honestly, it might work at 18 or something, right? Because if 16 works at 8,000, then, like, yeah, 18 at 8,300 should probably work, or 20. Um, WTRS6, 
That could probably be a five or a four even. Um, and then uh, read to read and write to write, I just set both of those to eight. Um, at some point, these probably do need to get looser, but that point is probably in excess of 8,400. Um, and then write to read, I have it at four and TRDR, uh, TRDWR at 18, because um, at 8,000, that would have been 16. So yeah, just loosen that out a bit since I was going to 8,300. I'm not entirely certain that this is actually necessary for it to be this loose, but yeah. And then for the drive strap, well, for all of the resistances, I just left those on auto because that seems to be working just fine with this board. Um, and yeah, so like a surprisingly easy setup to run for me because like in the past, my experience with trying to go past 8,000 on Ryzen 9000 was very unpleasant. <laughs> like it was not working on like, well, yeah, it was basically not working at all on most boards that I tried. Um, but uh, with this board, it was basically just a matter of like raising VDDP. So like at 8200, it needed 1.1 VDDP. At 8300, it needs 1.15. And at 8400, I would imagine it needs 1.2, but that unfortunately doesn't post. So um, yeah, but I do need to do more testing on that on like if different memory sticks might not lower the VDDP requirements or something like that. So that's still, like if that happens that like different memory sticks lower the VDDP requirements, I'm gonna be somewhat confused because I'm not really sure what the mechanics of that behavior would be. Um, anyway, so yeah, now like, like, uh, is this my greatest memory overclock ever in terms of like, effort and fine tuning? No. In terms of raw frequency, yes. I've not that like I've not run like I've not managed to run stability tests at a frequency this high before. Um so that's cool. But yeah, now now I basically just have more stuff to test based on uh my findings with this board. Um and uh yeah, um I think that's it for the video. So a big thank you to G-Skill for the memory kit. Big thank you to the channel supporters for funding the purchase of the motherboard. Uh, I hope to get a PCB breakdown of the motherboard done sometime soon. The one thing that like has been delaying it is I do want to get oscilloscope measurements from this board before I do a PCB breakdown. Because, um, yeah, that's like the one thing I've been wondering about with this board is how is the voltage regulation? Because that, that on a lot of, like, gigabyte... They've actually, on AM5, I'd say they've kind of figured out the memory overclocking side of things. But when it comes to their power delivery, their voltage regulators sometimes have some very questionable behavior. Um, anyway, um, I think that's it for the video. So I guess uh, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. Leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. And if you'd like to support the channel, there are links in the description that you could check out. That would be much appreciated. And yeah, that is it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.